Cal. About three years ago, we reviewed a movie. Three years ago? Three years ago. Fifteen years ago. These guys. You don't I say. I got shot. You don't say. No, I do say, and I'll continue to say it eight <laughs> more times in this. It was four guys that shot at me. The sergeant started saying that it was one guy. Because I know, I was a victim. I was the one that got shot. All right, I saw about four flashes coming at me. So, he was telling me that it was one guy. The Sergeant Rivera, he changed that story. All right, so you tell me three years ago. Three we years ago, we reviewed this movie about three years ago. Okay. And in this movie, there was this person who, 15 years ago, got shot. He got shot? About 15, 15 years, years ago. ago. 15 years ago, he got shot. But three years ago, we reviewed this movie. Oh. <laughs> it's Alex Bazinet! Again! Oh, fuck. Hello, welcome back to the... Hold on, don't move. Okay, nailed it. We're professionals. <laughs> Welcome back to the 140th episode. Good, better, bad, show. We're show. We're going to tell you if you... 140 episodes. 140, it's fucking nuts. Tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo. Joined, as always, by my other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, people have been asking for so long for us to finish off the Alex Mazinette yes. quadrilogy. Which, right? It's four what, films. What was it? it was... Uh, Narcs. Narcs. Checkmate, Checkmate, Lady Turf Rider, War. which Wait, Turf War, yeah. Lady Rider, I think the um, same thing. And then finally, the the, the da curse, the da curse, the da curse. <laughs> <laughs> Starting. <laughs> Oh boy, this is May Alex Masonette's second film. Um, what was the first one? Was the first one Narcs? First one was Narcs, and we'll talk about that. We'll t I have so many questions, Kyle. This movie, you fucking texted me before I had started watching this <laughs> and said, I want to read it directly. <laughs> Unironically, this is Alex Mays's best work. And I said, interesting. And you said, strongest writing. And then an hour and a half later, after I had watched the movie, I said, you are crazy. This is incomprehensible. To my, to my defense, <laughs> to my defense, we are also comparing this to the other three films. A man named Lena, the son of a lady named Leela. Leela is into voodoo. Leela put a curse on us after her son was shot and he was killed by Officer James. According to Officer Prima, she said that Layla was powerful. She is a high-ranking voodoo priest. Of course, Mike. Sure, but this might be the least comprehensible Alex Mays in that film, in my opinion. It's, I will give you this, if this is what you meant. This movie has the most interesting kernel of a story in it. Yes. The most unique, interesting idea for a story buried somewhere in here of like, there's like a million storylines, which is the main issue I have with, well, with all of his eight films. trillion plots going on. But like, there's this kind of interesting storyline of um, the, the Santeria interplay with the police department and this cop who is also a, a practicing member of Santeria and has been discriminated against because of that and then becomes part of the plot to get revenge <laughs> yes. against the police but actually is still a I there's an interesting idea somewhere in there but it is I was waiting executed. for there to be some sequel tease. I don't even know how they could I, how could you even keep track of the plot threads in this movie enough to make a sequel no but the other thing I was interested to know is if any, and I don't remember because it's been so long since we've watched his movies. If any of these characters are the characters, yes. they are there's one, right. There's one. Is it only one? There's one. There's one connecting guy. Who? Blaze. Yo, Domingo is Blaze, man. He ain't looking too good. What the fuck you got on your face? Yeah. So he's got the same name because I wrote that. It's just like Blaze. Yes. There's, I mean, there's a Rocco, but I'm pretty sure Rocco in Turf War and Checkmate was just like a run of the mill cop. Every actor is from the other movies yeah, in this movie. Because Alex Banks had only known like 20 yes. people. And there's that one guy who's eventually becomes a detective, the bald guy, like the handsome bald guy. He becomes mm. a detective in Turf War, maybe? I think so. And he's a beat cop in this one, I think. And I was wondering if that also lined up, like if this is his backstory. I think but he was a sergeant. 
or whatever. But but he's not a detective. Like he becomes like a detective later yeah. on. But it can't play. It can't match up too much because Alex Mays' character in this one is not his characters no. in the other no. one at all. Let me tell you something, man. I bury my mom and my brother over shit like that. My condolences to you, your mom, your brother. Do you want me to tell you about Babala, man? I, I'm it's trying to explain it, and it's already incomprehensible. There's a drug lord in this one. Yes, I think. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm going to give you 15 for that. All right? I need 15 for this. Yo, Mike, take him to the back. Let him get 15, man. Kind of. I mean, not I think. He definitely is, but also is a mm. Santeria high priest, I think. Guys, I mean, <laughs> there's so much. There's so much yeah. in this movie. There's so much. <laughs> This is revenge for my brother, for my mother. But luckily, we we start grounded with something that will always bring me happiness in an Alex Mays film, which is we get to see the police department yes. and all of the posters that do I, make it clear that we are in the NYPD. For the record, the second I saw uh, ITN distribution, oh, yeah. I was like, yes. Well, that's who does all of his movies. Yes. It's always been ITN so you, with you, Alex You know Mays. when you get that, you've oh, yeah. got some quality coming your Oh, way. absolutely. But I just love when we see, get to see the NYPD posters on every wall. Everything. In this, in this library they filmed in or whatever the fuck they filmed this movie in. This abandoned warehouse. Um, it's delightful. As soon as you see it. And, and I love because it's he uses the same ones. It's the same set. Yes. It's the same everything. It's those ones that's like a big, long thing that says like nypd and it has a bunch of oh it, it's, uh, it's what, amazing. like a lot of them are just like posters of patches it just nypd patches yep there's a shot at the end of the towards the middle of this movie where we're i think it's near the um the receptionist lady's desk where the camera pans over and there's one of those nypd badge posters and then six inches to the right is another, another identical one. Yes. nypd yes <laughs> I was like, what the fuck oh are you doing? God. What is going on? Um, um, let's just start it so off. So Blaze is running yeah. at the beginning of this. They're uh, Oh, they're they're like they're, well, they're like they're in, they're uh, in robbing some a woman. Yeah. yeah, apartment house, yada yada, whatever. And they are looking for drugs. Well yeah. they find them. Uh, but the police show up were called. And right as they show up, this woman <laughs> She just gets fucking flung out of the second store second story window or whatever. Yeah, and lands like in front of the cop car. And they're like, a woman just fell out of the building or something. It's fucking wild. Radio dispatch yeah. central. The body of a woman was just thrown from either a window or the roof. Send an ambulance. Who can say where the road goes? And then the, the, the two guys, Blaze and his partner or whatever, mm. come running down the stairs. And the cops come in and they shoot one of them. Yeah. And he falls on the ground. And then immediately Blaze grabs the gun the guy had yeah. and runs away. And I'm like, how did they not see the guy? They shot him. He was mm -hmm. like four feet in front of there them. Was also, there was also both the cops were yeah. in clear view. Of yeah. Them. And somehow they don't see Blaze like grab the gun and run away. <laughs> they like completely well, miss that is called. We, we know Blaze is called Blade not just because he knows how to roll a blunt, but because the dude can run. <laughs> It's, it's so like ridiculous. Stephen Baldwin. In the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he 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 chugs his arms so fast and moves so slowly. <laughs> he's like doing. He's like acting like he's running much faster but, uh, than he is. Unsurprisingly, he's able to outrun these forty-year-old actors. <laughs> yes. Uh, he's able to get away from these cops and jumps a fence and is gone. Uh, I love his little jog so much. Um, but now the gun's gone and they're in trouble because, the, you know, they, the guy had a gun, but now he doesn't. So they're like, oh, it's a, an ar you shot an unarmed guy. But they're like, no, he had a gun. He had a gun, partner. Hey. Somebody must have saw something. Hey, if you say you had a gun, he had a gun, man. We'll find it. All right? Don't worry about it. We got you. He had a gun. And the dialogue in all of this. Yeah. I mean, the whole movie, it's Alex Mazinette, so the dialogue will always be completely nuts because every scene is half improvised and half scripted. Yeah, but you know I can't go around there. That bitch has girlfriend on my hands. A fucking restraining order against me, man. True that. But you know what? I'm gonna set aside one G for my man Sean. He died for this. And this other 14, I'm just me and you. 
It's like every scene he go, I swear what he must do is go, okay, you need to tell them this information, but however you get that information across to them is how you do it. So they just repeat the same stuff over and over and well, over see, and I over. See, I think it's even different than that. Really? I think what, what he does is uh, Alex Mazinette wants to do, whenever he's doing uh, cross coverage and pickup shots and stuff, because obviously they're only shooting this on one film. They shot or this with a the red. They shot this with a red. Some of it. Some, Some of, it. of it. You can this tell. This movie is shot with like eight different cameras, yes. like most of his movies. But, but. they do a pickup line, and Alex Mazinette is giving them a feed pickup line. He's just like, yeah, so so he and we end with him talking about this. So just, just go with this as a pickup, and we just start dialogue from there. It was four guys that shot at me. The sergeant started saying that it was one guy. Because I know, I was a victim. I was the one that got shot. All right, I saw about four flashes coming at me. So... He was telling me that it was one guy. But Sergeant Rivera, he changed that story. He changed that report. I had no choice. Yeah. And then he but just then leaves he cuts it in. Every, yeah, every time. And so it's always, that's why they repeat the, the lines like constantly. Because if you notice, every time they do one of those repeating lines, it's at the start of a new cut. All right, officer, please take a seat. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you, officer? I'm Detective Johnson from Internal Affairs. My partner to my left is Detective Clark. How are you doing? All right. And just for the record, this conversation is now being recorded. We get our first Alex Mazinette uh, newspaper shot, which we get tons of in this movie, and I will never not laugh at the headlines. They look so bad. And the headlines are just nothing that would ever be in a newspaper, like ever. Oh, because like this first headline we get from the newspaper is like headlines about the people that the the shooting yes. that happened, yes. and the pictures <laughs> are all just stills from the from, movie. Yes, my favorite one. My favorite one was this old lady dying. That headline, <laughs> I have it written incredible. down. What the fuck is it? It's uh oh god. Oh my god. I wrote know, it down. Mother of son shot by cop dies of suffering. Yes, that Caused is what it is. Son. Yes. <laughs> Woman, uh, or yeah, mother of, of man shot by cops <laughs> dies from suffering of, of, of cops or something. It's written in a way that is just so, incomprehensible so and amazing. And it's just her dead body laying in a bed like... <laughs> <laughs> Why would they have that picture, oh Kyle? Oh my god. Why would they have that picture? It's fucking amazing. Uh, we cut to the police station. And uh, I love at one point where the captain is sitting in his office or at his desk and we, we get uh, behind him or it might not be the captain. It might be the bald guy behind him on a, a peg on the wall is a narcs jacket. And this yes. is filmed right after yes. narcs. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, nice little narcs uh, flashback there. Sober is it's amazing. So good. Well, it's 10 years now and I'm still here acting as a drug dealer, running around with Big Ed. For this case, I'm Jackson. I'm Uncle Mace. And then all the cops, they're coming in after the shooting, and they're all going to go chat, and they're like, we got to talk. Where should we talk? And the guy's like, how about the men's room? Hey, uh, let's uh, go talk somewhere up there. Where do you want to go? Men's let's room? Let's go find a place where we can talk. All right, let's go to place. Okay, and they all walk into the bathroom to chit-chat. And okay. act like that's a normal thing. I guess that might be a normal thing, like for like shady cops, like because there's no no um like microphones yeah. or anything. And maybe that's the idea. Is like, oh, they're going to chat because there's no there's no well, mics in so the bathroom. Like, th th this officer, Officer James, I think is it's James. Yeah, his last name. So is James, he's yeah. on he immediately under scrutiny for like you you for shooting this guy. Yeah, yeah, who they think is unarmed because he didn't have a gun. Yeah, or yeah. they couldn't find the gun. Yeah. Um, and so now he's, he's under investigation. He's got like a, the, the yeah. suspension and everything. And he was already suspended once, like a month ago for shooting somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> Shit. That's going to be a problem. You know, it's the second shooting officer James was in in the last six months. This guy shoots everybody all the time. <laughs> Spoilers. He should not be a cop. And that is not the message of this movie. We get to the end and they're like, you tried. <laughs> it's like, oh what? My God. <laughs> wow. This is a blessing. It's a blessing. It, it clears it like it was an accident. You hear? He murdered three people in this movie. Well, like, I'll, I'll, I'll give him. I'll give him this first one because well, he had, a, dude gun, had yeah. a gun. He had a and gun. It was like pointing at, at him. him. Yes. <laughs> but from yeah, but from everything else we see, this guy just straight up just shoots people all the time, no matter what. His first yeah. reaction is, "Whoop, oh, bam!" It's like, all right, great, fantastic. Police, don't move. 
Also, so then we cut and we got to introduce the captain's wife. Mm. So the captain is one of the guys from all of the other Alex Mazinette movies. The old guy with the white hair. Ro- Rocco. Rocco. And we go meet his wife. Uh, in this one, who's uh, much younger than him, mm-hmm. but they want to have a baby. Yes, and she's this is this is classic Alex Mazinette writing. She says ten years ago like eight times. Yes, in the yes, one, yes. Sentences. I wanted another baby, ten years ago. And so did I, and I'm glad this is happening. Mm-hmm. Like after all these years, I really feel this is the right time. Waiting that five years to try again to have a baby. She exposits their entire history of trying to have a child to her husband who was who there, there for the whole thing. He was there. <laughs> we lost the last two babies. The first at seven months and the second one, Matthew. Two days and a respirator and then he died. <laughs> it's all obviously for us, the audience, but she's just like, and then you remember our second time we tried, the baby lived for a few months in the NICU and then died. And the guy's just like, Brian, remember, yeah. a, remember a month ago when we shot those episodes? Do you remember a month ago when that happened? Well, anyways, a month ago when we shot those episodes. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, right. I Thank you for there. telling me about that, Kyle. I, cause I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's like, oh, remember that time our child died after two months? Like, it, it's so, the, the whole scene is incredible. It's mm. amazing. But now I am six months pregnant, pregnant and I'm and doing good. fine and carrying in good health. Um, and I was like, oh, 100%. And she's like, but luckily this time I'm six months pregnant and things are going great. Nailed like, it. Well, she's going to fucking die. No, yeah. She doesn't, but <laughs> almost. Mike, okay. this should be it. Yes. I thank God every day. I love, I love you. you too. A few moments later. <laughs> My God, what happened? Why oh, is there blood over the sheet? So then uh, James is getting investigated by, uh, you know, internal affairs or whatever about what happened. Uh, and <laughs> My God, this internal affairs officer is fucking he was He was in one of the other movies. Mm-hmm. He's one of the guys that Maze hates in one of the other I movies. I think he's a dirty cop in Nurks. It was you that I could never trust. You're a monster. Trust me, and I'll see you in hell soon. <laughs> Not that soon, my old friend. Drop the gun! Drop the gun! I, I think say. he might be a dirty... He's a dirty cop in one of them, um, but in this one, he's like an internal affairs guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some great editing here where we're, we're like cut from James being interviewed by the police to some random person we have yet to see doing like magic rituals or something like with chicken leg, you know, yeah. the, and which is ultimately <laughs> we'll find out what all is going on there. And then it just hard cuts from that to a spinning newspaper flying at the camera. <laughs> and, it's, and then it starts doing that. And then it's like immediately cuts from that to another. It's, Up, guys. The the editing in this movie, I felt like by the end of the movie, I thought I was on like an acid trip. It, it, nothing, <laughs> everything just cuts constantly with zero explanation. And we need to talk about this cop who is also a practicing like high priest and stuff. Yes, uh, that's uh, Ruda, um, right? Is his name? Yeah. So I, like, I don't know if we've been introduced to him yet, but we're getting close to it. I am not familiar with the practice of uh, Santeria. Santeria and, well, they say like eight different religions over the course yeah. of this movie because they're like, well, Santeria, but it's also split up into these other things. Of course, Mike. Santeria, it has different branches of religion. You mentioned Babala, Palanque, the really powerful stuff, and they're dangerous. And I don't know enough about but, any of like it to his, know. His big thing is is taking a chicken foot yeah. and, and spitting on it. Yeah. And with then, like some sort of like liquor or something, he drinks something and then spits it on the. Yeah. And then and then taking a puff from a cigar. Yeah. And then blowing smoke onto it. I think this is accurate-ish. It seems like Maze knows yeah. enough about what's going on here. Well, to, I would to, hope so to because this literally accurately. everybody in this movie is either a cop. <laughs> Or some practicing member of yeah, Santeria. Yeah, and they call most of them like high priests or priests or something like that in the movie. And again, I don't know if that's the right terminology or whatever. Do you know who she is? Who is she? She's a high priestess in Brujeria. I love when we're introduced to Ruda, he has a voiceover. Yeah. And he goes, I'm an NYPD during the day and a Santero during the night. Hi, my name is Michael Ruda. 
I'm a New York City police officer. I'm a cop during the day and a Santero during the night. I've been transferred a million times because of my religion. I'm also a victim. A victim of NYPD for various reasons. I'm discriminated against. I'm made fun of. And all because I have my religious beliefs and convictions. <laughs> and also as he's walking and he's like, this is my first day on the new job at this first at this new precinct. And he walks in and his police uniform D is, is so not eight sizes too so large for him. <laughs> He's such a thin guy. He looks like a child wearing his father's like police <laughs> uniform. Yes. It is incredible. I love it so much. Oh, fuck. Today is my first day at this precinct. I hope this individual captain will one day understand that I'm here to help. So then uh, James is like, I can't work with this guy. I was just driving, minding my own business, and he started rubbing an egg on me, and I don't know what's going on, but I can't work with him because he's fucking crazy. I get along with everybody on the force, and you know that. No matter skin, religion, anything. But this guy, I just can't roll with. It's this new guy. This uh, He's actually an old-timer, Officer Ruder. Also, he was lying, and that's... This is the thing that's so strange in this movie is we set up this yes. James guy as like a bad guy the yes. whole time. Like he murdered, and we haven't even gotten to the part where he murders the kid or whatever. Um, we haven't even gotten to that part yet, but in this part, he's lying that that he was like driving and this started happening when actually he was like sleeping on the job. And mm -hmm. so we're, I, all of this is setting up the idea that this guy's like a bad guy. Yes. I'm driving, minding my own business, doing our tour, right? All of a sudden, I feel something on my arm. I'm scrolling up. I stopped the car. I turned around. He's putting an egg up my arm. He's telling the captain all this, and as they're leaving, there's this shot where him and the captain are standing in this doorway, and I don't know what happened, but their faces are like green. I, the color correction or something was completely off. Their faces are like green. I, it's very strange. Okay. I don't know what was going on. Um, but out of nowhere, we just get a random interspersed shot of a doorway exploding. It's great. I understand. Okay. Yeah. What the? F what? And then we get a news report where the, uh, the news reporter's like, and at the NYPD, there was an explosion, and they're investigating, or whatever. A mysterious minor explosion occurred at the 5-7 precinct. Crime scene unit is trying to figure out the cause. For now, there's an unknown motive. And my favorite thing is that the news reporter in this scene sounds like Jigsaw. I don't know why. Crime scene unit is trying to figure out the cause. For now, there's an unknown motive. I'll tell you what, this, like, what this movie was missing was some goddamn actual Lenny G. He's in the movie, he's in Kyle! The movie. He's in the movie, but he's not Lenny, but he's not Lenny. This gentleman and his friends, of course, are a major disturbance in the uh, restaurant. They're bringing outside food. You know. Lenny G reporting for News News Today. We have gotten into the crime scene of a possible homicide. As you have heard, the owner, Carl Johnson, who owns this auto repair shop, has been murdered. Well, instead, we get that fucking Holly, that piece of shit Holly Newsmax, whatever the fuck her name is. I'm Holly Jones with Max News, live outside of Club Hill. We're just about an hour ago in a narcotics incident. Highly decorated. Wow. And she's in one of his other movies, and I remember being Nart. very upset that Lenny G was not in the movie, yeah. but she was. And then we get a fucking news scene. And it wasn't Lenny G! Lenny G! <laughs> I'm Holly Jones with Max News Live at Adobo Lounge. We did not get Lenny G in this movie. Get out of here, Holly Jones. Nobody likes you. And it's not news news today. No, it's like news. It's Max News. Max News. Because she's not Lenny G. Fuck you. <laughs> I want Lenny G from news news today. Where this, this man was castrated and then murdered. <laughs>
Lenny G, thank you. Lenny G, news, news today. He's so good at getting the hard-hitting coverage. He absolutely hard- is. Oh. That man better have won numerous Emmys, regional <laughs> Emmys, numerous regional Emmys. Lenny G reporting live from News News Today. The ongoing investigation continues in the Ladies Riders case. And gentlemen, if you are a biker, you really need to be careful. Every pretty face may not be the right face for you. This is where it, it, it becomes incomprehensible at this point because then, like, it, the captain's talking to his wife, who's explaining to him about Santa, Santeria and how it's extremely powerful. Palenque, it, it's very serious. It's, um, it's black magic. If you address it good, hit good centuria. If you address it badly, it can be extremely dangerous. And she's gonna talk to her mom about it. And I I want you all to understand that I, you, as I try to explain the plot of this movie from my notes, it's going to make zero sense to you, but that is not my failing. <laughs> that is the movie I happen to think it's strong, right? <laughs> I, please go watch this movie. It's on Tubi and then come back and go in the comments and explain to Kyle how this movie makes no fucking sense whatsoever. It is random scenes. I, no, I'm not saying it makes zero. Like There are through lines that there, you can there, glean. There is a skeleton Kind of. Kind of, but it is so incomprehensibly edited that you can't figure out... It's so impossible Mm. to keep track of characters and who's doing what, when, and why. Mike, that's it. You need to warn Officer James. No, you know what? Better yet, I will call my mother. She'll know what to do. Please, do this as soon as possible. I need it as soon as possible. Or, Or great writing, as Kyle would call it. Um, the best writing. Uh, it's, art. <laughs> it's art. He says that it can be very dangerous. And one of us might not make it. Oh, baby. <gasps> no. Oh, baby, no. We'll be fine. What's all this blood on the sheet? It's art. <laughs> uh, so then we get a random scene, and this is the scene. And this is the scene that sets everything off. It's not a random scene, but randomly we cut to Blaze in a hallway watching some woman make out with some dude and yes. repeat the same line, exactly the same line twice. I Jose, you and I can really make good music. I Jose, you and I can really make good music. So this woman is making out with this guy and then Blaze runs to his partner, a different partner, not mm-hmm. the guy that got shot obviously earlier, and is like, hey, your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, they're not even dating anymore, ex-girlfriend, because she has a restraining order against her. Yes. But you know I can't go around there. That bitch has girlfriend on my head. A fucking restraining order against me, man. She has a restraining order against him, and he shows up and is threatening her with a gun, and Blaze is hanging out. And then some random woman across the street sees this and calls the police. And then he just shoots yeah, her. He just kills boom, her. Right in the forehead. And meanwhile, we're setting up this other character who's inside listening to a Walkman. His name mm-hmm. is Nene, I believe, or... It's spelled N-E-N-E. I don't yeah. know how, I can't remember how they pronounce it. Um, and the movie great will set, yeah, great mustache. The movie will set up that he is like special needs or something yeah. like that. He comes outside to take the trash out, I believe, mm-hmm. and comes across her dead body right as the police, oh, oh, but first Blaze threatens to murder him randomly, I guess because they're worried he saw them or something. I yeah. don't know. Yo, 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 man, yo, 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 but that that doesn't go anywhere they're like let's get out of here but then the the cops come across the cops come across this guy because he's trying to help her he finds her body and he's like oh my god and he like bends down and then the cops come around the corner and james he's got you know i mean oh yeah yeah. he's got earbuds he's got earbuds in because he listens to a walkman that's like his character quirk is like he listens to a walkman and so the uh, our officer shooty shoot comes around the corner just immediately immediately blows him away and is like oh you had a walkman i thought it was a gun Police! Don't move! Great. Fantastic. Yep. Um, and then he takes the Walkman and plants a gun and on him. Don't even think about it. It was an accident. And and his and 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 Prima, who is this is where we're kind of introduced to Prima, who's one of the other main characters. Um uh she's like another, and she's like, what are you doing? Don't do like, that. Don't even think about it. Also, he plants a gun on the net, does not have a magazine in it. No. I don't know if you yeah, noticed, that. but you can see the bottom of the yeah, gun. It's like, it's like a little wall through it. Which happens it. numerous times in this movie. We'll talk about the other one here in a few minutes. So 
chaos breaks out. There's like people who's like like a crowd has formed, and there's like reporters and the police are there, and the the old woman who is the mother, I believe, <laughs> yes. or grandmother of, uh, she, of she, Nene, comes out and she curses. She them. Just puts a curse on them. Uh, okay. Supposedly, that's what she says. Um, she's she's yelling at them in in her native language and and puts a curse on them. She's a high priestess in brujeria. What the fuck is that? She just cursed you. She put a curse on you. Prima's like, uh, you got a curse on you. We fucked up. <laughs> this is all bad now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I love we cut a close up of the woman who got shot in the head and the fucking latex appliance. It's on her. So, you, oh the God. seam, like the edges are so bad. It's not, it's, it's real rough. It is exceedingly problematic. It's not asymmetrical. It's just crooked and wonky. Uh, uh, and also then Prima just punches the shit out of James. That was fantastic. <laughs> she like hauls off and just punches him in the yep. face. <laughs> it's like, well done. Then you're a motherfucking rat. Oh. Fuck you, I ain't no rat. Oh, so yeah. Go. <laughs> she is um, now bedridden, like, just, like you know, it's, it's, it's. Uh, oh, the old lady. Yeah, the old lady. The old lady. Is, I'm not Prima, she yeah. Is, Oh, no, no. Yeah, no. My brains. Yeah, well, that's what... They, literally, my note here yeah. is, Kyle, this is giving me anxiety. This editing is literally giving me anxiety. But the, the, there are like 12 different plot lines going on at the, once. The here. old lady is now bedridden from from suffer, from suffer like mental suffering. Yes. Uh, and As we find out in the news article that says the, she died from suffering. And finally, <laughs> finally, Alex Mazenet shows up. Yes. And he, he gets... He's like the son of her as well. I believe he's yeah because they're I think it was his brother yes like the yeah it was because Nene the guy that got and I think I keep saying Nene and it feels like wrong but it's spelled something like that mm -hmm. um it, it was his brother that got killed um and he shows up on the crime scene and he finds a badge while yes. he's there that somehow everybody <laughs> missed it's just well so the, the badge ground. got knocked out and then we had a scene afterwards where they had Officer James like it was his badge. <laughs> Well, but he has a second badge because he gets a badge later because it, there's a mix up with the. Ba we'll talk yeah. about that. That's wild. Um, but also, we, the number of times this is one of those moments where, like you talked about earlier, where clearly Prima was given one thing she had to say, which was that she grew up around this kind of stuff. And so she says it like 8,000 times in every scene that she's yes. in. For her. Yep. She's like, I grew up around they this stuff. They need to know that you know this shit. <laughs> yeah. I grew up in this stuff. I know about this. This is no Listen, joke. This. I grew up around this stuff. This is very serious. Do you know about it? Do you? Because I do. You may not believe in santeria or in brujeria, but it exists. It's very real. I know. I grew up around this stuff. Uh, she ends up resigning, though. She goes in. She goes in, and she she's trying to tell everybody that hey, he he was crooked, and that this lady put a curse on us. And they're like, "You're crazy. We got to take you to the psychiatrist. You need to go to the psychiatrist, whatever." And then she goes into the captain's office or the sergeant's office or something, mm -hmm. and it's like, "No, this is what's going on." He's like, "You're crazy. You got to go to the psychiatrist." She's like, "Well, fuck you. I resign." And she slams her badge and her gun down because i resign effective immediately and this is that other moment where she slams the gun down no magazine in the gun nope, she nope. doesn't take it out like which is a thing they sometimes do in movies she doesn't do that she just slams an empty gun down on the counter effective immediately we also get a scene where uh we now uh the old lady dies like you said and then uh, Maze has to get revenge and he says like he's Every, constantly in 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 the creole spanish or whatever it just it subtitles up on the bottom. They will pay for this. They will pay for this. Yeah. They will pay for this. This is revenge. Uh, and we see Alex Mazinette from this moment to the end of the movie do the 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 like revenge yeah. ritual like eight thousand. He, he drops times. like he drops very uh, clear fake blood. On, yeah, insanely fake blood. It's, it's just, like it's like vibrantly red and it's like corn syrup. Yeah, it's corn like syrup, red dye, red yeah. dye, and and seashells just con yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, and maybe that maybe that maybe that is what you use corn syrup with red dye instead of actual blood. I don't know. But um, it's the blood of a chicken. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be the blood of a chicken. It's, yeah, it's very clearly fake. <laughs> Prima gets home from resigning at the police station, and when she gets into her home, she hears all this, like, sounds like somebody is in her kitchen breaking all her dishes mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> And then she goes in and it's a, just, dove? It's a dove flies out the window. And I'm sure that it's like some Which meaningful I, religious thing. I was thing. Like, surprised that they were able they to just get, get a dove. Yeah, for this. it's a real dove. It flies out go, the window. Alex. Yeah, it's not like a bad effect, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's actual dove. Oh, 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 oh. 
then she calls Cuba, who's a friend of hers. Hey, Conyo, you're gonna live a long time, huh? Is everything all right? I had to resign. That's serious, huh? No, no, sure, I'll set it up. Tonight, 9 p.m. Thank you. Which we will get a flashback story explaining how they met. Mm. Papa, Prima's a great person. We met 10 years ago, during the time when Carmen has the cancer. We met 10 years ago. There's so many characters and I'm so lost. Then Maze goes to get a curse or a blessing, or Cuba does, to get a curse or a blessing from the highest priest in the area, mm -hmm. which turns out to be Ruda, yes. who's uh, by day is a cop. <clears throat> oh, it's Maze who does this because he yeah. goes, to talk to this guy, and he's the like, guy he's talking to is like, I'll take you to Ruda, but you can't mention that you're getting revenge on cops because he is a cop. Well, I can take you to Ruda. Coyo, that'll he be great. is the highest in El Barrio. CC, si, si, that would be great. Just one thing. And why is that, Theo? Elejara. Kyle, I, I don't. It's in, it's it's in, once again. It's nonsense. Kyle, this is his best it's written word. None. I was so lost. I was so lost. It's art. <laughs> but so he, this guy takes him to 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 see Ruda, um, and it's Maze's uncle is who he's talking to at this point, mm -hmm. or Maze's character's uncle is who he's talking to at this point. He takes him to see Ruda, and Ruda's like, "All right, come with me to my kingdom." And they go into at first they go into this like store that sells like religious stuff or whatever. And then he's like, come with me to my kingdom. And they go out the back door and they walk into like this like, you know, like a small city park, like garden area with yeah. a fountain. I was like, what, what, what do you mean your kingdom? And Ruta's like, look at my kingdom. I'll wait right here. I'll wait for you later. You guys go ahead. This is my kingdom. And as he's saying those lines, you can hear a fucking garbage truck like backing up in the background. It's like, beep, beep, beep. This is my kingdom, my paradise. This is amazing. <laughs> my paradise. <laughs> Perfect. It's Nailed it. amazing. Also, the guy who plays Ruda, his voice is amazing. You must wear this at all times. Many blessings will come from this. Thank you. It's, it's so ooh, like raspy. deep and raspy. Yeah. It's in, it's incredible. I love it. I'm transferred from precinct to precinct more times than I can remember. Then the guy who shot the girl at the beginning, not the beginning, the guy who shot his ex-girlfriend mm. for ch not even cheating on him just because he's a fucking asshole. Um, he is now suffering. He was cursed. I guess this is Maze's curse. Yes. And he's just like, his he's like, skin is like boiling. It's boiling. like melting. He's I don't in, even know. Like just screaming in pain. Yeah. 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 So he's, he's now suffering from the curse of that. I think this is what Maze did. And then Prima decides she needs to go to a priest and be cleansed because she was cursed also because she was a policeman, yes. a police officer that was involved with the thing. And then we get a flashback of how she knows Cuba. Cuba. Prima's a great person. We met 10 years ago, during the time when Carmen has the cancer. Who is the guy who's taking her to a different priest to get cleansed. So we have a whole scene that's a flashback of how her and Cuba met. Well, and Cuba he... was robbing a store. Yes. So I tried to rob this store. What's this? No, 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 no. I know you got more no, money. No, 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 no. No. And there's this great moment of him putting his mask on to go rob the store, and he so can't get the ridiculous. face holes over his eyes. It's like it, over it, his it nose. It reminded me of Peyton yeah. Manning. Oh yeah, yeah. I was thinking of the uh, the scene with the um, the uh, uh, is it in um, uh, Django Unchained with the cake where they're trying to put the masks on and the face oh, hole, God. the eye holes aren't like. My Damn, I can't see fucking shit out of this thing. That's what I was thinking of because it's like he has an eye hole over his nose and he's like, I can't. What the so fuck? impractical. <laughs> but he ends up, he goes to steal from this, like, the guy bodega. that he knows and he works for. A guy he worked for, he goes to steal from him because his wife, who I thought was his mom 100%, is dying from an unspecified illness yes. and he needs the money to pay for her treatments. That's all they say. There's no details about it. 
and we do this whole flashback, and then he gets back, and he didn't end up getting any money, and then the police, but the guy calls the police on him because he recognized him, and they show up at his house, and one of the police who shows up at his house is Prima, yes, and she and comes she inside and mask. finds the mask, but decides not to report him because she sees the dying wife and is like, aha, you are a good guy, actually, you're trying to help your dying wife, so I'm not gonna turn you in. Yeah, James, he checks out. She comes back later and gives him a buttload of money. Drug money, specifically. Is it drug money? Because her dad was a drug drug runner, drug lord or whatever. Yes. And she said, my, my dad, before he passed away, told me to use this money for something good. Now, it's drug money, and I, I don't feel like I can do any good with it, but maybe you can. Yes, but of course, and then he's the, like, great, thank you, fantastic. The, the money also is hilariously fake. It's just printer paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But he's like, fantastic, I owe you one. We're done. Now we flash yes. back. But I have to talk about one line. It's my favorite moment in the entire movie. Cuba is talking to his dying wife. I At the time, I thought it was his mother, which made this okay. even funnier if it was actually his dying oh, mother. But wife, it's still funny. He says to her, it was, he's like, oh, I did a bad thing. I tried to go rob the, the bodega down the street. It was supposed to be simple. It was supposed to be an in but and I out job. <laughs> he says it was supposed to be an in and out job. It was supposed to be a simple thing, in and out. And she's dying. Fucking, she has like a cancer hat thing mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, you know, just the epitome of like in your, on your deathbed. She says, that's the problem with men. They all think they can just go in and out. In and out. That's the problem with the men. They all think that they could just go in and out. <laughs> hey -o! Hey -o! That's a ridiculous sex joke <laughs> on her death. It's amazing. I was, and it totally does not fit in this That's scene great. at all. It makes no Brian, sense. Brian, if you ever have dying words for people around you, please make it something That's like that. That's the problem with men. They all think they can just go in and out. <laughs> That's the problem with the men. They all think that they could just go in and out. And then I die. Oh my god, I love that moment. Do, do you want us to record his last words? Uh, uh, maybe not. We flashback, and so now we know how Cuba and, and Prima became friends. And Prima is with Cuba at his, like, priest's place. And as they're leaving, I think she got cleansed. Or no, she had, no, she didn't get cleansed yet. He tells her, in order to get cleansed, you have to go get a very good chicken. And she's got to go do that. But that's... Mañana me trae la gallina. Okay. Claro que sí. Okay, no way. But as they're yes. leaving, the old man waves to them leaving for like 45 minutes. <laughs> they walk out the door. He's like, Gracias. Okay. Bye. Bye. He's still waving when they come back. <laughs> real it's so weird and awkward i love it um but oh surprise remember that plot line about this the captain's wife who was six months pregnant mm -hmm. gotta get back to that randomly oh man she's cursed now not because you know she's like the wife of the of the of the one of the police officers but because she specifically was doing laundry earlier that day and put on the captain's shirt and the and that touching her transferred the curse to her i think i'm like 99 percent sure that's what happened sure she's not allergic to the denim or something <laughs> but she says oh i went to the doctor and the doctor was like hey everything was fine yesterday now your baby's dying there's complication now i don't know what happened two weeks ago there was everything was fine the baby was healthy everything and now dr laura says it's something weird the baby's not breathing well and they might have to induce labor but she was treating herself with the traditional way you treat yourself. Oil and cranberry oil juice. Oil and cranberry juice. I've been putting cream on my stomach. It's an old remedy that my grandma used when I was a little girl. It's cranberry and oil and all these other herbs. It's supposed to help my skin stay tight. A rubbed on her stomach. And, and that's why the sheets are, they're not bloody. They're cranberry juice covered. Trying to explain this movie is giving me... A gigantic headache, Kyle. It's it's insanity. Once again, 
Alex Mason, that's strong striding. <laughs> it's art. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and she also apparently just understands all this stuff because her mom, I believe, is involved with Santa Maria mm -hmm. or something like that. So her mom knows all this shit. No, you know what? Better yet, I will call my mother. She'll know what to do. Please do this as soon as possible. I need it as soon as possible. Then we get a black and white scene in a restaurant. Yes. This is where Lenny G shows up, by the way. Yes. It's where Lenny G shows up. And Kyle, it took me so long to realize this was all a dream. Did oh. you realize that's what's going on Yeah, here? because it's an Alex Mazinette film. Everything in black and white's a dream. <laughs> is that always the case? Yeah. When else does that happen? Uh, in Narcs, I believe. Oh. Oh. No. Well, fuck. There, it's all black and white, and it's it's. Ruda is in the restaurant, and they're doing San, Santeria rituals at their dinner table in the restaurant, and all the other people are like, "Hey, man, can you not fling chicken blood around while we're eating dinner? <laughs> Just like be real chill if you didn't do yeah. that." Um, but then they won't leave the restaurant, and one of the guys is holding a knife. One of the Santa. None of this is, it's all crazy, Kyle. I don't understand what's supposed to be happening in mm. any of this. But it turns out later we find out this was all a warning to Officer Perez, who's another character we don't know anything about, but the one who, in a minute, is one of my favorite scenes in this entire movie as well. This was all a warning to her about what's about to happen to her, but we'll get to that momentarily. My dream was like deja vu. Ruda was trying to warn Officer Perez. Ruda, he called Officer Perez butterfly. Butterfly means wisdom. This man is amazing. Prima goes, she brings the very good chicken that she found to the, <laughs> and he specifically says, it's like, yeah. this is a great chicken. You got a, this is an A plus chicken, well done. Oh, see? And then he's doing a cleansing ritual of some sort to her to cleanse the curse from her. Um, and then at that moment, the captain, I think it's the captain, right? Just shows up. Yeah. 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 How did he show find her? The captain just shows up. I don't up. know. And while he's in there, she's after she gets cleansed, we get a shot of her laying on the ground and her spirit just leaves her body? Yeah. But that never goes anywhere? No. I don't. Okay. Kyle, I don't understand anything that happens in this movie. It's art. <laughs> James is like, you've got to go find the guy with the gun so that I can get not in jail for murdering people. Got to find that black guy with the gun, all right? I got to have it. Without that, I'm you dead. You can count on us. But that's not the... The guy with the gun is irrelevant to the thing yes. that he would be in jail for, which is murdering the kid with the Walkman. That was not the... The and gun is irrelevant evidence. to that. Yeah, and the gun is irrelevant to that because yeah. the gun was the guy he shot... The other guy he shot earlier in the... That's the problem with the men's. They all think that they could just go in and out. Uh, also, there's a big dramatic uh, uh, emergency like call. Like there, a big emergency call goes out. Yeah. So everybody's like getting their uniforms and stuff and ready. And the music during this is incredible. It's just it's. It, oh, I'll just put it in. But uh, they have an emergency call, and James ends up not getting his shirt on. He gets another guy's shirt on. They, a switcheroo happens. Yes. They, uh, two different cops get the wrong shirts with the wrong badges. And it turns out all of this was just a setup to murder James. Potentially, I guess. Most of James pay in death. Like, as the revenge curse or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and this other police officer gets <laughs> shot in the Take, face by a shotgun. Yes. Open up, the police! Getting shots fired, units. And then I okay. love they go ahead. Okay, so he, they 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 respond to this call. Sorry, continue. I'm listening. I'm just recharging. <laughs> <laughs> so they respond to this call. They open the door, and the guy immediately gets shot. Right? Yeah. So 
They call they they look at the badge and say this is James's this badge. This is the wrong badge. Yeah. So they call James to the location where the guy was shot. And did you see whenever James opens the door? Yes. The fucking killer is right there. Because he, here's what. Yes, that was what I was gonna say. He says they call him on the walkie and they're like, "You need to get down here, James. We found your badge." He's like, "Okay, I'll be down in a minute. I'm just up arresting the perp or whatever." Officer James, you on the air? On the air, Cap. What's your location? I'm at the suspect's apartment. Assisting in the arrest. In, I'm in the perp's apartment. I'll yeah. be right down. And then it cuts and he opens the door and the perp's apartment was right next to them. I'm at the suspect's apartment. Assisting in the arrest. Get down to the crime scene ASAP. Copy that, Cap. Cap. I think he was on a, like clearly like he he was done with his scene for that time because I think he was on a phone. Yeah, he's just like standing. It's fucking wild. It's yes. incredible. Uh, I guess when we got the call, he must have took my shirt and I took his. Uh, so they had the wrong badge, and then we watched the captain read a book about Santa Ria like eight times in over the end of this movie, and every it's so amazing because it's the same shots over and over yes. again. But also my favorite thing is the book just has a sticker printed on it that says Santeria. It's not like the actual title of the book. No, it's like it's, they it's like, like, oh. found a different book and they stuck a sticker on this it. It really doesn't it really doesn't tell us that it's about Santeria. What would if we st do a label maker and just and put we that put on a tarot book? card on it and then put a sticker that says Santa it's probably Nailed not a tarot it. card but whatever. It, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> then the black and white scenes from earlier that was a dream are now happening for real in the restaurant. Hey, let's break this up. Let's break this up. All right, all right, okay. Let's break this up. Okay. At 57 Wilson, disregard that call now. And I cannot follow any of this. But the amazing thing that happens is that after the, the, the thing in the restaurant transpires, Officer Perez was one of the people there. She come and she's also in other Alex Mason mm. movies in different roles. She comes back and she's in, she's like getting undressed, like, you know, switching into her civilian clothes or whatever in the locker room. And she drops her gun. Shit. And the magazine falls out. And she, I, do I, yes. The magazine <laughs> yeah. falls out. I can illustrate what happens. The magazine falls on the ground, picks up her gun. Holds it Genius. like this. Genius. Holds it like this and goes. Oh! Oh shit! <laughs> it shoots herself with the fucking gun. Also, wouldn't the round already been chambered that entire time? Yeah, it would have. I mean, yeah, it, it had to have been to be to real, shoot because she real safe. She didn't, yeah, so she had a round in the and and yeah. But my, my favorite is just she. This this is how I I always put my oh magazines my into my gun is I point it at my face and then I put it in. Boom! I'm good to go. <laughs> oh! Fucking amazing. Uh, so she gets shot in the shoulder. Oh! Um, and they're like, oh wait, that's why he called her the butterfly, cause he knew she was gonna shoot herself in the shoulder. What? And it was a warning, Kyle. Obviously, this all makes sense. Yep. What are you talking about? Officer Perez got shot. Oh my god, is she all right? She shot herself in the shoulder. Everything else is okay. Prima ends up going back on duty even after she got, you know, taken off the case or whatever, mm. or, or resigned. The captain's wife gives him a protection bracelet so that he will be protected so, like, from the curse. Good, I guess, on their end. Yes. Blaze is cursed too. He's got the rash all over his face, and, and he so, goes to Maze. Yes, and he's Domingo like, is, I need cleansing or yeah. some sort of and Maze's character is also uh, like a priest or whatever and so he goes to Maze and then he's explaining wh how this all happened and he explains and Maze realizes he was involved in and the the thing that went down with his brother yeah. where he got his brother killed I swear man I heard that shit on the news you heard that shit man man let me tell you something man I buried my mom and my brother over shit like that my condolences to you your mom your brother Um, and so he takes him into the back room. He's like, oh, I'll help you. And as he's walking away, he pulls a gun out. And it's the exact same gun that the cop planted on his brother earlier, which makes 
no sense. No. I mean, I guess. Well, I mean, it could be the same gun, just a different whatever. Sure. But, it's, but it's very clearly the same but gun. They just use the yeah. His solution, his character's solution, is to have Mays testify that he stole the gun. I guess to get some sort of deal. Yes. Domingo convinced him to turn himself in. He said he would lift the curse. He said he was going to do all of this for the sake of justice. Before we get there, I have to. That's the end. That where the where the where Prima explains everything that transpired, which we'll get to that momentarily. We're almost there. Um, but I do have to talk about how. Um, I love one of the things they do is there's another conversation that happens in the police precinct between some characters. This doesn't matter except for one of them mentions, oh, uh, man, all those construction sounds because the bomb that went off, they got to fix that hole in the wall or whatever. Listen, uh, I heard about what happened with the explosion there before. You guys are real lucky. Yeah, it's been pretty noisy around here. There's a lot of construction work, but this is only temporary, so it's not too bad. And, they, and then they... they pipe in all this like ridiculous uh, construction sound effects that are very clearly done to cover actually bad audio yes. that they had already. Yes. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, it's pretty noisy. Down here. Well, anyway, I got you the case file and Officer Rooter that you wanted. We got to talk about James. James now has gotten home and he's, he's worried about his trial or whatever the next day. So he starts drinking. And he has a spiritual trial? He has, he goes to hell, Kyle, and is judged by, this is the greatest scene in the movie. Like the most conceptually <laughs> interesting scene in the yes. movie. Does the defendant have words of mercy before the jury makes a decision? He ends up in hell and they are, we have 11 minutes. He ends up in hell, <laughs> he ends up in hell and all the dead, we also didn't talk about, um, meanwhile, Sal has been murdered. Yes. Ah! 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 Oh my God. Sal. 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 Michaels or whatever. Whatever, the other guy uh, has been killed. <laughs> by a car. Look out! Look out! Because 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 we keep seeing Mays like dropping blood on their pictures and yeah. they all keep dying and then we got to talk about Sal dying. Sal fucking goes he he retires. Yes. He's like I retire. Yeah, yeah, I can't handle this. We're out. I'm so glad you're home. Yeah, I have so nice. much for you to do around here. It's good to be home, right? Have me around. Yeah. Do all those chores you always mm -hmm. wanted me to do. Goes home, hanging out with his super hot old lady wife, who it's the middle of the morning and she's got a full face of makeup and her tits are just out. Like, just yeah. you can see her areolas, I'm like 99% oh, sure. But she's like, he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get to that honeydew list, and the first thing I gotta do change is the light bulb. change that light bulb. And he climbs a ladder and he's changing the light bulb and it's flickering. And so he's like, there's something wrong with this. So he sticks his finger in the socket, socket of the and then gets electrocuted. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. Oh my god. Well, yeah, and the other guy had already gotten run over in a in a scene that rivals Neil, Neil Green, Green getting hit by a pretty car. good. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Good. Look out! Then meanwhile, James is in his his nightmare hell trial mm. where Prima is his judge with her face covered. She looks like a fucking Benny Jesuit or something from <laughs> Dune. Like she has like this very interesting face yeah. covering. <laughs> and then uh fucking um James has got his head all wrapped up and and, and all of the Sal and everybody is there up. dead. Yeah. Like they're all the people who have died over so the they, course like, of the movie. So they have these disfiguring like scars. Yeah, so they're all dead and he's on trial because all of this is his fault and she she uh she fucking rules that he must burn in hellfire or whatever. You were sentenced to burn in hell. And then he wakes up from his nightmare and he gets a phone call. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What? Hi, partner. Got some great news for you this morning. Oh, also, when he's in hell, he's in like they're having this court scene, which they just hung sheets on all the walls. Yep. But also, he's in like you know, like the the perp pen or whatever, like where they put him. They literally, he's it's just a fireplace grate yep, cover. Yep. 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 <laughs> I love it. So because much. Because if they would have went with like a child playset pen or whatever, like a toddler pen. Yeah. It, it just no. 
Nope. They were like, it's metal. Oh, it's fuck. It's incredible. Or... I didn't mean to hurt you. Did anybody spay on me? Please have mercy on me. Please, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Uh, and then Prima, so James wakes up from his, his whiskey-infused nightmare, which I get, also got to mention the whiskey bottle. That I love how they don't even try to, like, hide that they just duct tape over all the brands in this. Yep. It's just like, we just see the bottle. Just Anyways, but he wakes up from his whiskey-infused night, uh, field nightmare where he was uh, sentenced to eternal hellfire by Prima's ghost or something. Um, and Prima calls him on the phone and is like, good news everything is fixed. Let me explain it to you over the course of three minutes on this phone call. The missing gun's been returned. Blaze. Yeah, he's the suspect from about a month ago. He said he grabbed the gun after you shot his boy. And she literally just goes through all the details that Mays found out what Blaze did and he all, all he wants to do, he turned them all in because he just wants to clear his brother's name. He says that he had a curse on him that was making his face disfigured. So he needed the Babala to bless him. But you are never gonna believe who the Babala is. It's amazing. It's Nene's brother, Domingo. And I love that she's, he's, she says, he wants it to be known that he was only a victim of being unarmed and with a Walkman. <laughs> he just wants his brother's name to be clear. He wants it to be known that he was only a victim of being unarmed with a Walkman and not a gun. Yeah, well, that was in the that was like in the paper anyway. Yeah, I know, I know, but yeah, it, it, oh god, just the way the lines are written and delivered. Okay. He even gave us Blaze's partner in crime, Carlos. Carlos is the guy that shot the girl. Wow. And then uh, she goes, he wanted everyone to know his brother was innocent, special, and had special needs. <laughs> He wants it to be known that he was innocent, special, and mentally challenged. What? He just wants everybody to know that. <laughs> okay. Okay. What is happening? Uh, then we got, we, um, she explains, again, explains everything. It's judgment day. That guy Domingo really did the right thing. Yeah, the captain made an exception. He allowed the evidence to be released. Yeah, the Walkman. They released it to Nene's brother, Domingo. Because, you know, it had so much sentimental value to them. And Ruda, we get a voiceover. Ruda gets a promotion. He gets called to the captain's office. And the captain's office in this scene is a, an old dilapidated hallway in the basement somewhere. Yeah. And he gets called in and he's like, they called me in and they gave me a promotion. And it was because the captain was accepting of my religion now. He finally came to his senses and respects my religion after I helped save his wife and helped Prima break the curse. And and that th plot line's right. Yeah, because Rocco's I, got a little bracelet. So yeah, like, hey, look. What, yeah. Yo, you're we're all good now. now. And then this is where it got really confusing. They are in court. They go to court, which is clearly an old like Catholic cathedral on the outside. It's like yes. a, it's clearly not a courthouse. It's like a, a church or I'm something. I'm sure it's some sort of public building. I saw the word cathedral on a oh, okay. thing. Yeah. Anyways, right. it looks like a cathedral. Um, but and I thought maybe that was on purpose because it's kind of playing with the weird like maybe that was actually an attempt at like some weird symbolism with like the the, the religious aspect of this and the like the scene before where they're in hell. I think that could work maybe mm. if I'm being very generous. Um, that it's not actually a courthouse. But when we get inside, it's supposed to be just a court because I love behind the judge on the wall, he printed and taped a sticker that says, and justice for all in tiny letters behind the judge on the wall. It's so amazing. But as they're walking into court and then in court, Sal, Sal is alive and now. the other guy are alive. Yeah. Was that all a I dream? I think that was all... Like, yeah, I think that was all delusion. Was that all of, part of, of uh, James's, James's just... like whiskey dream? I think. I oh my know. god, I don't it's, know. It's, it's so poorly put together. Oh the fuck! End. And all of I thought the had... I thought the ending was a piece of shit. It was a. It's the best part of the movie. <laughs> it's all just exposition. Prima oh. just goes in and gives this incredible. Um, all of them give these incredible testimonies in court. I'm Officer Sally. I responded to assist Officer James on a call for help. And unfortunately, as it turned out, what we thought was a weapon turned out to be a Walkman. 
and that's what I saw. The individual then turned, holding a Walkman, which we thought was a gun. Okay, uh, wah, wah. and what about the cop placing the yeah. weapon there? <laughs> yeah, all of these, there's so much. And then well, it's like, we're just going to go ahead and ignore that. Uh, let's get rid of that. Uh, I was just going to walk right past that. And also in this scene, did James dye his hair black? This took place at a different time. Yeah, his hair is a different color than it was the rest of the movie. Yeah. Well, anyways, he gets off on on all charges. He, yeah, they're like for they're, reasons. They're like, and you're you're in a, you're not guilty or whatever. What's the verdict? Not guilty, Your Honor. Officer James, you have been found not guilty on all charges. Case dismissed. And I was like, what do you think the odds are that at some point in his police career that Alex Mays murdered a kid with a Walkman? Because it's feeling like very high. Feeling like very high. Um, uh, and then, as they're leaving the courthouse, which again is like a cathedral. I mean, I don't know if that's maybe why he retired early to make movies. Yeah, uh, as, as there, um, that is, we have no idea. That's nope. probably not the case nope. at all. It's very unlikely that that's the case. It just seems. I'm like sure a, Alex Mason is a delightful, delightful, a delightful person. Um, but who knows? Uh, it seems like a lot of this is pulling from personal experience. So who knows? <laughs> um, the uh, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but they actually, uh, I can tell you 100 percent no, because he has no clue how internal affairs work. True. Well, he was a cop though. <laughs> yeah, he, he was yeah. a cop, but he has no clue how internal affairs works. Four minutes and 20 All seconds, right. Kyle. Uh, and where I have my last note here, but I love as they're leaving the courthouse, the um, uh, uh, Ruda is out there, like in his his his, his you know his garb. Mm. And he has this great voiceover line. It's, it's like, the they respect me now. At first, they saw me as weird and crazy. And now I'm a savior. Ain't this a bitch? <laughs> they saw me as weird, as crazy. And now I'm a savior. Ain't this a bitch? <laughs> great Ain't line. This a bitch? Great what? line. <laughs> what? Oh. what? Oh, my God. So it, everything worked out. Uh, our guy who killed a, a, a special needs kid <laughs> got off. He, he was a good guy, actually. It turns out, surprise, and I don't fucking know. This movie is good, bad, Kyle. I think. Yeah. It's. Al it, I will say this. It's my least favorite Alex Mazinette film that we've watched of the four or whatever because mm -hmm. it's the most confusing. <laughs> it's impossible to follow. Mm. The other ones are confusing, but this one... Trying to keep track of all the plot threads made was stressful. Well, I found it stressful to watch at times. If you're trying, if, if you don't have to see Brian, Brian Chiligo, it was stressful. I will say that it's only an issue for me because I was writing notes so we could talk about it on the show. I think if you're just watching it for fun, it wouldn't be that big a deal because mm. you don't have to keep track of shit. But I was like, oh my God, I have to talk about this movie and make it make sense. And I was like, ah! So, I, anyways. Yeah. Um, uh, but I would say good, bad, good, and, bad. Yeah, I mean. It's Alex Mazinette. What more can you yeah. say? Yeah, we have wrapped up Alex Mazinette's final film for now. For now. I don't want that for you. Please stop seeing this book for now. I'm going to put an end to this. As always, you can do this giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GV or BB support us for two, five, ten bucks a month there. That'd be super helpful. Two minutes and 45 seconds, go! I have a podcast called This Film Is Lit, where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, the most recent episode will be, I don't know, uh, we did Dune recently, but that's not the most recent one. When this one's out, Dune 2. Dune 2, Electric Boogaloo. It's not, I don't fucking, um, Dune 2, more sand, even more sand. Merch store, which Brian's actually flavored. Uh, Tpublic.com, uh, search for good, better, bad, bad. Yes. The link is also in the description. You just Get go a coffee there. mug. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's really great. Um, Twitch. Uh, uh, Twitch.tv uh, with our names. It's on the screen right now. You can go to those places and you can watch us. Do <laughs> We're super streams. official. Two minutes and 12 seconds, Kyle. Um, and then, uh, oh, you have even less time on yours. One minute and oh, 59 God. seconds, Kyle. Um, and then, um, fuck, what was I going to say? Uh, Twitch, uh, yeah, uh, we both stream occasionally on there. Um, there was something else I was going to mention. Fuck, uh, fuck, 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 fuck. Um, oh, thank you, everybody who recommended this. Uh, not that we weren't going to do it eventually anyways, because it's, you know, it's out. Yeah, it, exactly. It's, it feels good concluding. We it. did finally get to it, uh, and it's been a while. It's been a long time coming. Um, and then uh, one minute and keep, 12 keep seconds. Watching keep watching movies. Especially. especially. It's on Tubi. Just search for the curse or the, the curse. curse. I don't, it depends where it's named different things, different places. Some of it's the apostrophe curse. Other ones, it's the curse. And get the your mileage fill. may vary. <laughs> get your fill of Alex Get your Mazinet. fill of Alex Mazinet uh, in what is maybe his strangest movie. <laughs> and that's saying something. Yes. Still got a minute 20, baby. We're goldy. We're golden. You just want to screw around for a second. How's the weather? That's really nice, actually. It's been really... It's, um, because it's Halloween right now. We're yeah. filming this. Beautiful day. 
I'm gonna go have some chili for dinner. What is that? <laughs> like the. <laughs>